Before we open God's word, let's turn to him in prayer. Our Father and our God, we're thankful for the quietness of this evening hour. We're thankful that we could sing praises to thy holy name. But we're most thankful, Lord, for thy word that thou hast preserved, that we might be able to search it and that we might be able to know it. And Lord, by thy strength of thy spirit, might be able to live it. So we pray, Lord, now that you, as thou knowest the needs of all that have been, that have come tonight, we pray, Lord, that they would inspire the reading and the meditation thereupon, an application might be found in each life, that all would come and know that they have received a blessing. We thank you, Lord, for those that are also on live stream. We pray that you would care for them and provide them a blessing. Pray for those that could not make it tonight. We pray that you'd care for them, too, and provide a blessing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, let's turn together to Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes, the 11th chapter. <clears throat> Ecclesiastes 11, let's start from the beginning. Cast thy bread upon the waters for thou shalt find it after many days. Give a portion to seven and also to eight, for thou knowest not what evil shall be upon the earth. If the clouds are full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. And if the tree fall toward the south or toward the north, in the place where the tree falleth, there it shall be. He that observeth the wind shall not sow. And he that regardeth the clouds shall not reap. As thou knowest not what is the way of the spirit, nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with child, even so thou knowest not the works of God who maketh all. In the morning sow thy seed, and in the evening withhold not thine hand, for thou knowest not whither thou, whither, whither shall prosper either this or that, or whether they both shall be alike good. Truly the light is sweet, and a pleasant thing it is for the eye to behold the sun. But if a man live many years and rejoice in them all, yet let him remember the days of darkness, for they shall be many. All that cometh is vanity. Rejoice, O young man, in the in thy youth, and let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth, and walk in the ways of thine heart, and in the sight of thine eyes. But know thou that for all these things God shall bring thee into judgment. Therefore, remove sorrow from thy heart, and put away evil from thy flesh, for childish and youth are vanity. We've read the entire chapter. Our Father and our God, Lord, how good it is to come into thy presence. Father, how good it is to gather together here in the house of prayer. Father, to worship thee, to sing praises to thy name. Father, to recount the glorious things thou hast done. And even now, as we would look into thy word, Father, we we pray, provide a blessing, provide instruction, Father, through the Holy Spirit. Father, we pray for the inspiration of that spirit on Brother Willie, that he may bring forth, Father, the message this evening, that he could bring out the words of truth. And Father, that the spirit would convict our hearts and would make these words live and that they would bear fruit in our lives. Father, again, we remember those who are not with us this evening. Be with them also. Father, comfort them, strengthen them, bless them. We pray all these things in Jesus' name.
As I was reading this, this particular chapter, I was reminded of um, Brother Roland's sermon a Sunday or two ago regarding the sower and the seed, and we know that account very good. As the sower went forth, he sowed the seed, and it fell on four different grounds. And, um, but um, as I read this chapter and looked at verse 4, I see a very different picture. It's another farmer that is observing the winds and sh shall not sow, and the farmer that has been regarded the, regards the clouds, and so he doesn't reap. A very different account. But God's plan is, is as is outlined uh, in Psalm 126, it says, They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubt, doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. That's the way God wants it. God wants us to all be farmers, all be sowers of the seed, and all be reapers. And yes, at times, sometimes we'll be sowers, and sometimes we'll be reapers, but we're all here for the harvest. And as we Brother Roland had preached that sermon there about the four different grounds. This particular farmer here, he that observeth the wind shall not sow. What is that trying to tell us? Are we trying to look at the wind and then decide how we're going to sow our seeds? The scripture says we don't know where the wind comes and we don't know where the wind goes. We just can see the effect of the wind. But here this firm farmer is trying to absorb, absorb the, observe the wind, and so he decides if he's going to sow or not sow. That's not the way God wants us to operate. He's not asking us to look at the wind and say, okay, now is the time to sow. That's not the way God wants it to be. He wants, I can imagine that some farmers might say, you know what, if I cast my seed now and it's really windy, it's going to blow in exactly the spots where I don't want it to be. It'll be going to certain types of ground where I don't want it to be. It might not even fall on the ground. It might fall in a stream. It might fall somewhere else. And it won't be effective. But then... My question to myself is, is, who is determining when the sowing should take place? Are we looking for certain signs that we should be sowing? The scriptures don't indicate that to us. The scriptures indicate to us that we need to be sowing at all times. There shouldn't be a time where we don't take the word of God and allow it to flow to others. We don't know how receptive they're going to be, but that's not our business. Our business is to be like the sower in Matthew who casts the seed, and some of it falls on the wayside, some on stony ground, some on thorny areas, and some on great ground. So now let's not look for signs that are going to tell us this is the right time to sow the gospel message. No. When we rise up in the morning, where our prayer should be, Lord, we want to be used today. I want to be used today. I want to be effective for your kingdom. I don't know how that's going to be, but I want to be used in your kingdom. And I want to be able to sow the gospel message because that, that is what has saved me. That has what we redeemed me. That is what brought me to the light. That I can say truly the light is sweet and a pleasant thing it is for the eyes to behold it, the sun. When we've been brought to the light, 
It's such a stark contrast from the darkness. And don't we want so many others to come to that same realization? So sow the seed. Sow the word of God. It's God's business how it lands and where it lands and how, what effect it will have. And it might need to be sown several more times in that particular area as that heart becomes softer, as the ground becomes better. So let's not look for signs in the sky or any other kind of sign observing the wind. If I should go and sow or not. Let's not do that. Lord, I want to be effective today. I want to be working in your vineyard. I want to be doing the things that you want me to do. So let me be able to sow the seed. And Lord, I don't know who it's going to touch and how it's going to touch them. But you've commanded me to do that. And the latter part of the verse is, and he that regardeth the, the clouds shall not reap. Second Corinthians says, the sixth chapter, but this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he that soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. The vision I have of the, the farmer or the sower in Matthew is he's broadcasting by the handful. He doesn't have one or two little seeds and he's just kind of meagerly spreading them out. I don't see that. The gospel message wasn't designed like that. It's only for certain people in a certain little measure. No, I can see the sower broadcasting full stream. He which soweth sparingly, meagerly, shall reap also sparingly. That's not the way the gospel is supposed to be broadcast. It's supposed to be broadcast in full stream. No hindrance. Regarding the clouds, he that regarded the clouds shall not reap. He is the other farmer. He seems to be sitting on his sickle, or at least standing on it, or next to it, and he's not reaping. He's seeing this harvest that is white, white for the reaping. And he's looking at the clouds, and he's wondering, is this the right day? Am I supposed to be doing this? Is there a better time to do it? Is the rain going to come and wipe out the crop? I guess that's what every farmer is concerned about. And, and will I be swift enough to take the whole harvest in? A lot of those questions aren't questions for us. Those are God's issues. We need to just be going and working. Some of us are going to start working in the early mornings. Some are going to start in midday, and some are going to start towards the end of the day. But the Lord says, work, and let's get working. The fields are white for harvest. The seed has been sown and continues to be sown, and there's a harvest to be reaped. Let's not look into the skies and try to figure out the optimal time when we should be reaping. God says, reap. Talk to those people. Speak to them. Tell them the way. Show them the gospel message. Live it out. There's going to be uh, no excuses. Remember, the scripture says we're laborers together with the Lord Jesus Christ. So there's no excuses. We don't have to worry that, oh, am I going to get, be able to harvest all this? Am I going to be able to, grow, to touch all these people? They're all interested. Am I going to be able to harvest them all, all in one shot? That's the Lord's problem. That's not our problem. Our problem is to be useful and effective in his kingdom. And there might be more that come alongside. Or maybe the Lord will be there prodding everything along. And maybe he'll just cause a day to be a little bit slower. 
or maybe even stand still, or maybe even go backwards. The Lord has done that. When the time is necessary, there will be sufficient time. The Lord will make sure, and he'll be there caring for every detail because he cares about his creation. He cares about each one as he calls all mankind to him. He gives them an opportunity. And we need to be there, helping, digging about. We're not the ones that transform the heart and mind. God does that. We're the ones that show, point them to the Lord Jesus Christ and what he has done for each one of, what the Lord has done in each one of our lives. See, it says in the last two verses, which kind of cling along with the next chapter also, but he says, O O young man in thy youth, and let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth, and walk in the ways of thine heart and in the sight of thine eyes. But know thou that for all these things God shall bring thee into judgment. As you start reading that verse, you almost sounds positive. But it's got a lot of it about myself, me, myself, and I. And the sower is out there proclaiming the word, saying, watch out. Watch out. Because all these things that you think in your heart and in your mind are right and bring pleasure and bring joy to your life, watch out. God will bring them into judgment. Therefore, remove sorrow from your heart and put away evil from thy flesh, for childhood and youth are vanity. He wants us to have that transformation happen in our life. Those things that once we rejoiced in, once brought pleasure in our life, it's different now. When we see it God's way, it's different. And it's a complete change. It's not, it's a complete about face. There's nothing that the light likes about darkness. That's why the scriptures have such a stark contrast, light and darkness. It doesn't talk about gray. The few times it talks about gray, it uses the word lukewarm. That means not hot nor cold. And the scripture is very clear that 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 doesn't, it's not acceptable by God. Half-hearted, part-time, not fully committed, not priority number one, not giving God first place in everything is not acceptable. God's very clear about that. So we have to remember those things. So if we want to be a successful farmer, if we want to be a successful sower, if we need to be, want to be a successful reaper, let's not worry about those things that we observe or look at that we fully don't, that we don't understand. We don't understand the wind. We don't really understand the clouds. We need to understand the message that God has given us. That we are call ourselves Christian, then we need to be about God's business. We need to be doing those things that Christ was doing when he walked on this earth. And what he was doing was preaching and teaching and living. And that's what he's expecting of each one of us. So let, let's not be fearful with these things. Let not fear of the wind or the fear of the clouds hinder us from doing the work of the Lord. Let not fear overtake us and then cause us not to be faithful. Because that 
what it's all about, being faithful to the very end. That's what Christ said, will I find faith at the end? And we can't be fearful and faithful. Fearful is put aside when we're fully faithful to what the Lord wants us to do. So let us not let the winds cause us any fear. Let not the rains and the clouds and other things hinder us from doing God's work. Let us be faithful for the things that he's taught us and shown us to do. That when he comes again, he might find us as true and faithful servants of his. Father, we are thankful that we could come into your house this evening hour to put aside the tasks and the labors of the day and to sit at your feet as Mary and to hear a word from a precious book that we look at often. Father, we know not the ways of the wind. We don't know where it comes from. We don't know where it is going, but we could see its effect around us. And Father, we many times try to put you in a box, try to understand the mechanics of how you work in our lives. And at times it hinders us from, in simple faith, stepping out and be obe being obedient to your call. God, we pray that as we have heard tonight, we would sow the seed of thy word, the seed of thy love and thy truth to all men liberally, that we would not wait on this vocation but we, with, we would with all diligence seek to do thy work. For the time is coming, Father, when the harvest will be upon us and we all want to be ready for that day. God, be with us now. Dismiss us with thy peace and thy blessing. For we pray all this in thy son's name. Amen. The message we had this evening, to me, shows that we need, we need to take some risks. And that's something that I don't do well. So, but, and I honestly don't remember ever reading that verse four. I've read the last part of this chapter and into the next one, but, Basically, what this is telling us, and a good part of this chapter talks about risk. And he says, if you're waiting for the perfect time, it's not going to come. If you keep waiting for the perfect time to do something, you'll never do it. Whether it's sowing or reaping, whatever it is, if you wait for the perfect time, you will not end up doing it. Because the perfect time will never come. And we have to take risks. The Apostle Paul, again, a well-known verse, 2 Timothy 4, 1 and 2. I would like to close with that. I charge thee, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant, in season, out of season, Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. In season and out of season. If you keep waiting for the right time, it'll never come. Just do it. Scatter the seed, it'll fall wherever it falls. And just like we heard about the sower in, in, in Matthew and also in the other Gospels. He didn't, some of it fell where it should, and some of it fell 
where it would not be productive or maybe be only partly productive. But the sower just went out and sowed it. And so for us too. And I'm talking to myself here first. Take the risk. Spread the word. You never know whose life it might touch. Amen. This will conclude our service.